Okay, so the outfield puzzle still needs to be put together for the Yankees. Well, at least as it pertains to left field, right? And, you know, this talk about Andrew Benatendi and some other guys. I mean, Yoshida's off the market. Nimmo's off the market. So the options are limited. So it's either going to be Benatendi. Maybe some folks are considering Michael Brantley now. Uh, and then some options via trade. You know, we already heard the, the crazy one with uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. I don't know how much teeth that has or how credible that stuff is. But that's kind of, kind of being pushed around. And again, this guy has like a decade left on his contract and like $300 million or somewhere around there. So, yes, he's 24. Yes, he's a star player. But again, he just got popped for juicing. Okay? He's had like two surgeries recently off of bonehead-ass injuries. So... I mean, <laughs> is that a type of risk that's worth taking? I don't know. Okay? And, you know, and again, obviously, we'd want them to take a lot of our crappy contracts. But like I said yesterday, there's not a chance in the world I would do that trade unless we can add a clause to his contract, an accountability clause, where if he gets popped again for juicing, his contract is voided immediately. Even if there's eight years left, we don't care. There's got to be some kind of accountability for these players. I mean, if you could ban Pete Rose for life for gambling, but you can't ban, like, multiple steroid violators, <laughs> or you can't even void their contract, what the hell's wrong with the sport? Right? Um, that's where, I mean, this is where the, the obsession with money and this and that, there needs to be some kind of accountability for players. We can't just pop uh, coaches and uh, managers like they do over in Houston Astros and leave all the players scot-free for their cheating scandal. Can't do it. Okay, but that's it. There's another name floating around now from the Minnesota Twins. Okay, yeah, we've already heard about the Diamondbacks outfielders and blah, blah, blah. Now, we're now, now Max Kepler's name is being thrown out there. He's a 29-year-old outfielder, hits lefty, throws righty. And, you know, just, just for some stat perspective, okay, you know, he, he's got a – let me pull this up here because I have it. He had a 2.1 war, okay, in 2022, nine homers. He batted 227. He's a career 232 hitter with 129 home runs. Okay, and but that's what we got on him. I mean, you know, for those that are, he's never been a high WAR player for those that like those types of stats. And he's got two years left on his deal: eight and a half million for 2023 and uh, 10 million for 2024. So he's not a free agent until 2025. So yeah, it'll cost a few pieces to get him, but. You know, it's not going to cost the haul. It would cost less than it would Brian Reynolds. But if I'm choosing between him and Brian Reynolds, I'm going Brian Reynolds all day. Okay? Uh, Tatis is a whole other story. And, again, I, I'm i not entertaining that. Like, you know, I don't think any team's going to get him anyway without giving up a top five in baseball prospect and a very good baseball player at the very least if they're going to eat all that freaking money. Okay? But... So I'm going to keep that one in fantasy land. But this is another name being thrown around now, Max Kepler. What are your thoughts? I mean, would you rather get him or Benatendi? Benatendi, we know now, is going to get overpaid because of the uh, uh, Brandon Nimmo contract, that eight-year, $162 million contract. So he's probably going to get 20 plus per year, Benatendi, probably, most likely. And while we're waiting for this uh, eternal preparation period for Carlos Rodon's offer, <laughs> and... Uh, um, the outfield market still needs to be addressed. So, and I'm also hearing from Michael K that they're not really in on Carlos Correa. So, you take that what you will, but you know, take, I take it with a grain of salt. I I don't know who the hell to believe. So, and uh, and again, like what's bigger? You know, they keep saying, "Oh, Michael K said it," and Buster only said that this other trade they're potentially working on is bigger than Rodon. Well, Kepler is not bigger than Rodon. Okay, Tatis would, but that's going to come with a whole lot of pieces and baggage and what else. Brian Reynolds would be right up there. Okay, and Carlos Correa and free agency would be right up there. Okay, you still got Dansby Swanson too, who won't cost as much. But if I'm choosing between F F Tatis and Correa, I'm going Correa. Just just contract. He's not attached to a qualifying offer either anymore. You can only get one in a career. So it would just cost money instead of boatloads of prospects and a boatload of money. And a potentially a boatload of drama. So... It's something to consider there, and uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Why are you? Uh, would you consider Max Kepler? I don't know. I mean, he's, he's apparently available. Or would you prefer one of the Diamondbacks outfielders, or Michael Brantley for like some folks consider, or just Andrew Benatendi, or Brian Reynolds? Those are seem to be the options right now. Uh, for the Arizona Diamondbacks, probably I'm hearing Dalton Varsho and Jake McCarthy. Um, what's the other kid's name? Corbin Carroll. I think he's not on the market. 
And uh, so two young dynamic players there, still developing. Um, the one that obviously is most major league uh, is Brian Reynolds with Kep Kepler a little bit behind him. So what are your thoughts on that? Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that, especially if you enjoy this content enough to do that, um, I appreciate it, but I don't want you to miss out when all these moves happen. And the Yankees have moves to make. We make it news on Rodone today. I'll put out a video on that. I'm going to make sure that you know whatever this offer is. You know, like somebody just sent to me all. I'm hearing that. Let me look at it now. I'm hearing that. Um, oh, he just said Jack Curry. Just told me on Twitter. Jack Curry has said that this, this offer looks like it might be seven years, $200 million from the Yankees for Carlos Rodon. That's what he just he just told me. Jack Curry said that. So now I'm gonna look up Jack Curry while we're here to see if this guy's full of crap or what. You might as well, right? So let's do that. Hang on a second here. Let's see what we got. Jack Curry. Pull him up on Twitter here. Let's see what see what we got. I don't know if that's. <laughs> I don't know if that's got some juice to it, or teeth to it. But let's see. Jack Curry, hot stove, hot stove. I don't see anything where he says that's going to be the offer. We know that's what they're asking for, seven years and starting with a two and not a one. But I'm, I'm not seeing that there. Unless he said it on the hot stove last night on TV or something, which I didn't see. But that's what I just got. Somebody told me that Jack Curry is suggesting that's going to be the offer. Now, once the offer comes out, I'll put out a video so you know exactly what it is. And we'll get into that too. And then we'll go live tomorrow night. Uh, to discuss this hot stove and discuss <laughs> with this guy. Because apparently, I did hear yesterday that he's supposed to, well, he's going to be making his decision apparently either today or tomorrow as to who to sign with. And I don't, I don't even, we don't even know if he has other offers. So, but this is what Boris does too. He waits out everybody. Patience, the most patient agent like in the history. He strikes when he knows when to strike and he just waits people out. The guy's a freaking genius at it. So, what are your thoughts, gang? And good morning, by the way. It's Brick Cole. You see, I'm spending out of here in Brick City, so bundling up. So, I hope you're staying warm where you are. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.